The following is a presentation of the IHSA Television Network. Someone today will make history, Woodlawn and Carrollton, two towns without a state championship. Christian Hollenkamp hopes to change that, and Joey Coonrod's free throws give the Hawks an opportunity for their first state championship. Two teams, one title, America's original March Madness next. in the state championship in class 1A, two towns separated by 120 miles, and we know that the state championship in class 1A is headed south towards the St. Louis area. Hi, everyone. Welcome into our broadcast. Matt Rodewald with you here at Carver Arena as we get set for our class 1A title game. Good third place game. We'll see if that means we have a good state championship game coming up. And for the call, let's send it over to Lee Hall and Greg Sterrick with all the action. Gentlemen. All right, Matt Rodewald, thank you very much. And we are looking forward to this one. A couple of top 10 teams Greg Sterrett coming into this one, and it was interesting Thursday at the at the shoot arounds and the practices. Jeff Crumweedy was sitting uh, talking to me, and uh, Shane Witzel came up and they greeted each other. These two guys know each other, and uh, Witzel congratulated Crumweedy on being here. And Crumweedy says, "Yeah, now don't spoil it for me." So you got a couple of guys that know each other pretty well and know each other's tendencies and styles coming into this game. Well, they may be friends, but they still want to come away with a championship. But both these ball clubs are very solid ball clubs they were very good in uh, yesterday's uh, ball game Woodlawn brings back three starters from a year ago when they finished third in the state championship and of course when you look at Carrollton they've got a tremendous player in, in Joey Coonrod. Let's take a look at uh, A.J. Webb. He was the leading scorer and uh, one of those three returning starters for Woodlawn. Well, he was tremendous in the ball game yesterday. 21 points, seven of nine field goals, two of two threes, and five of eight free throws. And he's also their best defender. He was tremendous in the game yesterday. And on the other side is Joey Coonrod. He made the two big free throws to give uh, Carrollton the win yesterday. Well, he was just as good. He was tremendous for his ball club also. He's a tremendous scorer. He gets uh, four. 15 points per ball game, but yesterday he was special. 15 points and 11 rebounds. When you look at this game, what do you see as key to this ball game? Well, I think it's how well one of these ball clubs gets out. I think the start is very important in the ball game. Woodlawn start yesterday was tremendous, and Carrollton start was very good yesterday in the ball game. So I think whichever ball club can really get out and get some things going early in the ball game, I think the three-point shot by Woodlawn will be very important and key in the basketball game. Carrollton is solid on the glass. They're a very good rebounding basketball team. And if you're Woodlawn, you want to keep Holland Camp on the floor. You don't want him to get in foul problems. And on the other side of the ledger, Coonrod must stay out of foul problem if Carrollton expects to win. Illini Central, the comeback win for our third place trophy. Woodlawn and Carrollton playing for number one in 1A. Coming up tonight at 6.30, Rockford Lutheran and Seton Academy tip it off. And Breeze Central goes against U High out of normal Illinois the Pioneers coming up tonight here on the IHSA TV network Christian Holland camp 16 points a game he's the leading scorer for the Cardinals they come into this ball game 28 and 5 they average 66 points per game that's six more than last year's uh, team that came to state well they're a very good solid basketball team a little different look this year they're more of a, a perimeter basketball team this year the Woodland Cardinals let's go to Paul Herzog for today's starting lineups Good afternoon, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria, welcome to Carver Arena for America's original March Madness. Today's 1A championship game in 2012 features the Hawks of Carrollton, a record of 30 and 4, and the Woodland Cardinals, a record of 28 and 5. Now to honor America. Please stand, remove your caps, and pause for a moment of silence as we remember the men and women of the armed forces serving us here and around the world, away from their families, protecting our freedom. Thank you, as we thank them. Now please address the flag with your hand over your heart as Anna Novotny, a senior at Caneland High School, leads us in the singing of our national anthem. What 
And now, let's meet the starting lineups for this championship contest. At a forward for Carrollton, 6'2", junior, number 15, Jordan Har. At a forward for Woodlawn, a 6'5", senior, number 30, Christian Hollenkamp. Another forward for the Hawks, a 6'2", senior, 25, Tyler Watson. Another forward for the Cardinals, a six-foot junior, 33, Chris Harlow. Third forward for Carrollton, a 6'5", senior, 43, Cody Kraut. And a guard for Woodland, 5'11", senior, A.J. Webb. And a guard for the Hawks, a 5'6 senior, 24, Mike Fraley. And a guard for the Cardinals, a 6'5 junior, 22, Gabe Owens. The other guard for Carrollton, a 6'2 senior, 41, Joey Coonrod. The third guard for Woodlawn, a 5'11 sophomore, 31, Jason Hickman. Head coach for Carrollton is 18 years at the school, a record of 363, and 161 is Jeff Crumweedy. Head coach for Woodlawn, 16 years for the Cardinals, a record of 339, and 132, Shane Witzel. And here's our officials for today's 1A state championship. John McAvoy, Bob Engel, Doug Strom calling the action as Woodlawn faces Carrollton. One of them will win their first state championship when we come back. IHSA Network Basketball is presented by Country Financial. What's your idea of financial security? Visit countryfinancial.com and we'll help you achieve financial security no matter where you're starting from. We're just about ready to get things started here. Shane Witzel, his 16th season, five straight regional titles for the Woodlawn Cardinals, ranked 10th in the final AP poll. Number seven, Carrollton, led by Jeff Crumweedy. Five consecutive seasons with 20 or more wins. A lot of success, no state championships, not in basketball. One of them will come home with their first ever state championship basketball trophy for boys. Woodlawn wins the opening tip. Their third trip to state in the last four years. They've got a couple of trophies to show for it. Carrollton, the man-to-man -man defense to open the ball game. They really, they really pressure out on the perimeter. Three returning starters, as we mentioned, for Woodlawn from last year's third place winner. Coonrod matched up against Gabe Owens, number 22 for Woodlawn. Jason Hateman will try the three. Hateman got a good look at the three. Driving to the hole and drawing the foul is Mike Fraley. Three, four, 
Fraley only five six had a pretty good ball game yesterday had five points in in their win yesterday and even got two rebounds so Fraley at their line to shoot two. Coaches call him the Burdan bomber. He's from Burdan Illinois population twenty five salute. <laughs> Well, when you talk about Carrollton, they only, only have what 12 basketball players in the in the whole program. And talking to their coach, the visit I had with him, he said, "Thank goodness we got 11 eighth graders." Absolutely, help is on the way. Carrollton leads it two nothing. Owens with it at the top of the key. Not a lot of room for him, but an open three look for Harlow. Cardinals missed their first two shots. Carrollton a couple of free throws for the early lead in our 1A state championship game. Lee Hall, Greg Sterick, Matt Rodewald with you here from Carver Arena in downtown Peoria. Good back cut that time by Coonrod. Nice back cut that time by Coonrod, the top player on Carrollton's ball club, averages 14 and gets 10 rebounds per ball game. Gets his first two pointer of this ball game. Second team All Stater gives Carrollton a four nothing lead. Jumper for Harlow is no good, but he'll go to the line. So the guys that don't really score a lot have gotten the early shot opportunities for Woodlawn. Yeah, when you think back to the ball game yesterday, the three starters returning, they scored 51 of the 62 points. Speaking of of Webb, Holland, Camp, and Owens in the ball game yesterday. Tyler Watson whistled for the foul there as Chris Harlow makes the free throw, just a 53% free thrower on the year. 6 for junior rattles in the second they go inside to crowd and a whistle on uh, is it Holland Camp or Hateman who gets the whistle there good look on the inside just a nice lob pass they go inside to crowd the big fellow on the inside and he was pushed from behind at 6'5", 200 pounds. He's going to be difficult for uh, Woodlawn to check on the inside. Hateman checks out. Two personal fouls already in the ballgame for Hateman. Yeah, nice skip pass over the top to find Coonrod. Woodlawn man-to-man -man defense. Coonrod, tough shot, but he drills it. Oh, going to the left, what a nice job turning quickly and squaring the shoulders to knock down the mid-range jumper. Coonrod, 15 points, 11 boards, but seven turnovers in yesterday's ball game. It was his 12th double-double of the year. Inside Webb, the leading scorer yesterday, wanted a foul. Hart takes it in the lane, gets his own miss. Can't get it to go that time either. Holland Camp finally cleans up on the rebound. And already here early in the ball game, Carrollton, Carrollton Ball Club, their strength and their size is, is a little difficult for Woodlawn to deal with. Holland Camp for three. Christian Holland Camp, 16 points a game. 36 threes coming into the action at Carver Arena this weekend. He makes it a one point game. Owens the other way now. Spins into the lane and hits. Gabe Owens just under 16 points a game for the Cardinals. Woodlawn takes its first lead. Kraut tries to battle through the double team and can't. Goes to the floor to get the ball but throws it to A.J. Webb. Line and it'll be the second personal foul on Tyler Watson. So Watson and Hateman 
with two quick fouls. A nice drive there by Harlow along that baseline area. Watson thought he was there, didn't get there in time. And the charging it was a block and not a charge. One point game as we go to break. The 1A state championship on the line here in Peoria. Back at Carver Arena, Jeff Crumweedy used a little uh, inspiration this week for his team as he showed them the film Hoosiers. Yes, uh, it's been a few years since we've done it, uh, but uh, thought it was appropriate. And uh, someone uh, suggested that we do it again, and I thought it was a good idea. We had some free time, and it really worked out well. They paid attention. They watched the, the movie from start to finish, and I was really impressed. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it affected them all right. They were all yelling hickory at each other here on the floor during Thursday's shoot around. And one of the assistant coaches measured the baskets just like they did in the film, just to make sure they're 10 feet, just to show the kids that no matter where you're playing, it's the same game, supposedly. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see him go out there and they wanted to take major. They wanted the ladder. They wanted it. They wanted it all. And uh, every one of them had to look up there at that rim and it seemed like the results were the same. It was 10 foot. I know when we did a <laughs> we did a Bradley game over there years ago at Butler at the old field house. Hinkle. And I I drilled the Jimmy Chit Joey Chitwood shot. I had to do it. I had to do it. How long did that take you? Uh, I'd rather not say 12 or 15 <laughs> I, shots. I got it done before the before the actual game. <laughs> A lot more than it would have taken you, I know. You know, it took 15 takes to get that shot, right? Well, there you go. I could have been in the That's film. That's not an easy Brian shot to make, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Thanks, Matt Rotowall. I, I appreciate that. Another basket by Coonrod. Gabe Owens looks for his first points of the afternoon. Holland Camp follows. Carrollton an 8-7 lead. Here comes Owens as the Hawks fail to score on another possession. Webb for three. Oh man. Almost NBA range out there for A.J. Webb, the 5'11 senior. Yeah, he's got a nice stroke to left-hander. He can shoot that three ball pretty deep. He's drawn the assignment of checking Coonrod, too. He would long man to man defense. Palin, the freshman, into the ball game now. He's called for traveling. He didn't want to pick up the ball. It looked like it got deflected, but it must not have because he didn't. Uh, he knew if he touched it, it was going to be called for a travel. Yeah, he was hoping he was going to buy a little time there, and Jordan R was going to slip over there and pick it up. But he didn't know that uh, that Palin couldn't grab the ball. And Gabe Owens picks up his dribble. Third turnover for the Hawks. They're fairly right up in Holland Camp's grill. I think Holland Camp would like to attack that if uh, Fraley was going to try and check Holland Camp because Fraley was a, it was a mismatch and uh, Fraley at about five six. Normally he's going to check uh, he's going to check Chris Harlow. Two minutes to go here in the first. Woodlaw on the two point lead. Oh and spins into the lane, bounces, bounces, won't go. Route the rebound. Fraley, the baseline jumper. And a rebound by Holland Camp. Doing a nice job on the glass. Four rebounds already in the ball game for Holland Camp. He averages just about six a game for Woodlawn. Gabe Owens for three. Palin gets the rebound quickly ahead to Fraley. Blocked by Holland Camp. He had three blocks in yesterday's win. Good hustle play that time by Holland Camp to get back, be a factor in the play with a block shot. 
One minute to go here in the first. Carrollton trails Woodlawn 10-8. Harlow, fallaway jumper won't go. Woodlawn getting some shots, Lee, but only three of 12, two of seven shooting the three. Fraley tries a three and drains it. Number 32 on the year for Mike Fraley. He gives his team a one-point lead. Five points for Fraley. The Berdan bomber strikes. Hollenkamp one-hand follow away, tough shot. Luke Palin, the freshman, will slow it down a little bit. Carrollton will hold for one, leading by one. Let me guess who may try and make this play. You think somehow Joey Kubrow might be involved in this play? I, I think you're right. He gives it to Palin, who shoots the three. Coonrod follows and scores! Joey Coonrod could run for mayor in Carrollton maybe after this weekend. Follows it up, a little lefty scoop, and it's a three-point Carrollton lead after one quarter. And they get a nice look, and right there is Coonrod right there. Takes it to the basket. A good job by Coonrod, and a shot by Owens for the Woodlawn Cardinals. Carrollton in front here as we have our Class 1A state championship game heading into the second quarter. We're going to stop talking basketball. I promised you that I wouldn't ask you about basketball. This is Reagan Witzel, freshman cheerleader and daughter of Shane Witzel, the head coach. He's got to be a mess at home, right? Not really. No? He's really calm. Is it, is, it, is it fun for you to be a part of this? This has to be great. Yeah, I'm, I've looked forward to this my whole life. I've always wanted to cheer for my dad, so it's really exciting. This experience of being able to share with all of your friends and being out on this floor has to just be amazing. Yeah, it is. I really like it's right. fun. We'll let, we'll let you get back to your job. You're doing some work too, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll let her go and get back to cheering for the Woodlawn Cardinals. Hopefully a state championship will be heading home. All right, Matt Rodewawa, well, we're going to have to do point counterpoint because Jeff Crumweedy's daughter, Hannah, is a manager for Carrollton. Now, she's not allowed to sit on the bench because you have to be a high schooler to sit on the bench down here. But maybe we can get her point of view. She's a little uh, sixth grade basketball player who, according to her father, has never met a shot she didn't like. <laughs> kind of like my partner here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At least that's what I'm told. <laughs> Carrollton with a three point lead. And when you look at numbers after the first quarter, Woodlawn should be happy to be only trailing by three points. They were only three of 13 from the floor, two of seven from the three point line. And in the rebound department, Carrollton a big advantage, 11 to five. Actually, in our uh, web shot rattles in. How about that? AJ Webb, 21 points yesterday. He was seven of nine from the floor. It was uh, very quality shots for him too. Coonrod for three. Oh, he's got a nice stroke from the outside. He can beat you off the bounce. He's got the all-around game. Tremendous in the ball game yesterday in their win. Crucial free throws down the stretch to seal the deal for Carrollton. We didn't get a chance to talk to, talk to John Geisler's daughter, the Illini Central coach. She's a cheerleader as well. So a lot of family ties here in uh, IHSA basketball. How many total inductees from the IHSA are in the NFHS Hall of Fame? That is our Realtor.com trivia question for our championship game. We'll have the answer for you coming up second half. Holland Camp for three. Made his first one. That one's a little long. Fraley in transition. Boy, he got out and ran the floor well. For a little guy, he can really get out and make, make things happen for the Hawks. And he was in the open floor. A good finish that time by Mike Fraley. He's one of the seven Hawks players who won a state championship in baseball at O'Brien Field here in Gloria last spring. Gabe Owens for three. Battling inside for the rebound. Woodlawn, Jake Robinson got a hand on it. Matt Kennedy also in there for Woodlawn. One of my concerns for Woodlawn coming into the ballgame is whether or not they could battle and get anything done on the glass. And so far early in this ballgame, Carrollton with a huge edge in the rebound department. Look at Carrollton's ball club when they, they go 6'5", 6'2", 6'2", and all these guys are, are put together pretty good. They're very strong, very physical. You can see they do a lot of weight room work. Uh, Holland Camp rattles. 
rattles in the three. He's got six. He makes it a three point game. Coonrod for three. It goes. There's a whistle after the bucket. The bucket will count. There's a whistle inside. We'll see who was called for the foul. I believe it's going to be against Carrollton. Uh, Palin, a quick look right there as Coonrod kind of curls off of the screen, squares the shoulders again nicely, and bangs in the three point shot. Carrollton now point lead. Coonrod's kind of caught fire here and making that outside jumper look pretty easy here in the first and second quarter. Yeah, only 30% from behind the arc this season. He had 21 makes on the entire season coming into this ball game. He's made a couple here in the second quarter. Woodlawn up six, but Hart turns it over. Yeah, got in a hurry on the play, a little bit in a hurry. Carroll doing a nice job though, pushing the ball up the floor quickly, trying to get back before Woodlawn can get set in their man-to-man uh, -man defense. Jordan Harz drawing the assignment of checking uh, Holland Camp, and even though he's got a couple threes, I think he's doing a pretty nice job on it. That's Matt Kennedy. Six foot junior for Woodlawn. Turn it over. Woodlawn can make it a two point game. A three would cut the lead to one. Patience for Woodlawn this trip. Third here a year ago, second in 2009. They lost that championship game to Macon Meridian. Holland Camp puts it on the floor and scores. Well, he can hit threes. He can create his own shot. Well, that was a nice, nice play that time by Holland Camp. Going left, he's a right-hander, but still was able to knock the shot down. Coonrod for three. Two ball clubs both very, very well coached, and they're very good on the defensive end. Quickly down the floor to Fraley. And Webb with the foul. Woodlawn's done a nice job at being able to convert off of turnovers. They've gotten seven points off of Carrollton's turnovers here in the ballgame. And you see Fraley takes it to the basket nicely, able to beat Webb on the drive, and then Webb picks up the personal foul. Fraley very active here in the ballgame on the offensive end. He's got eight points. Fraley's a kid who waited his turn, according to Jeff Crumweed. He spent three years on the JV. A senior. He's got nine and gives Carrollton a four point lead going to break. Holland Camp firing from in the lane. I think Coach does a great job like building up the younger players to, to fill in their role for the, pre, for the upcoming years. And it just, he gets them all prepared and ready for the big show. And they are used to being in the big show on the big stage. Third trip to state in the last four years. This team lost 2,000 points when Dawson Verhines and Josh Wiggs graduated. They're playing college ball. Woodlawn's still coming to state, Greg. Well, it's a different ball club than they were a year ago. They were really dominant on the inside with Josh Wiggs. And of course, Verhines on the outside. Shane Witzel making some changes. Had three starters coming back. This is really a perimeter ball club that, that lives and dies on a three-point shot. They're down by four, and they're only three of ten shooting the three here. Holland can't creates. Was a little short. Kraut misses it. Holland Camp with the rebound. He injured his ankle the week before state last year in practice. Last five minutes of practice. 
Still managed to score seven against DMAC in the third place game. That's Christian Hollenkamp who just fired that pass over to Jason Hateman who drains the three, his 18th of the year. Yeah, there's that three ball. They look to put up that three anytime they can. They're just a, a good shooting ball club from three point range. Hateman makes it a one point game, just over three minutes to go, first half. Inside Kraut can't hang on. But it'll be Carrollton ball. Just a spot up three right there by Jason Hapman, 5'11 sophomore, had three points in the ball game yesterday, but he can, when he spots up, he can knock down that three. Ooh. Jordan Har, a little jump step in the lane for the bucket. He's got four points. Boy, he got to the basket quick. Quite an athletic play for the junior captain. Gabe Owens three is off the mark. He was a three point champ as a freshman. Hey, three point shootout. Struggled though from three point range here in this ball game. O of four and only one of six. The freshman Palin off the dribble. AJ Webb slow to get up for Woodlawn. Carrollton leads it by three here. They led Illini Central by 12 in the semifinals yesterday, only to see that lead disappear as Palin gets the block. All 5'9", 145 of him. Well, a good block by Palin. Good. It was really, really a nice pass and a, and a good cut on the play to get it to Hateman. But Palin didn't want any part of that. And the little guy makes a good block. Uh, Getting open down low is Chris Harlow. Yeah, another good look on the inside. Woodlawn now attacking on the inside. And Harlow a good basket after a feed by A.J. Webb. Six players have now scored for Woodlawn. Coonrod's three is off the mark. Woodlawn can take a lead here. Harlow was, Harlow was open briefly. Hateman instead from the outside in the three ball going in for Woodlawn. Yeah, what a difference it makes when you start knocking down those threes. This is a ball club that relies on, on three point shooting. Now five of 13 shooting the three. Woodlawn leads it now by two. Try a three. That's just a little short. Coonrod, the rebound, swatted out of there by Hollenkamp. Under a minute to go now, first quarter. Patience for the Hawks. Set a school record with their 30th win yesterday. Hart puts it on the floor, takes it to the hoop, gets his own rebound, follows it up, and ties this ball game. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Hart got to the basket way too easily on that play. Woodlawn was in his own defense on that possession, and Hart was able just to drive it right to the rim. Final seconds, first half. 1A state championship on the line here. Holland Camp for three. Gave it a little extra. Oof. Coonrod from half court. Holland Camp with his third three of the game, and it's a three point Woodlawn lead here as we go to halftime at Carver Arena. The 1A state championship on the line, and it's Woodlawn on target from outside. Woodlawn with a 30 to 27 lead here in the championship game of class 1A. Woodlawn the Cardinals finishing third place a year ago and it's time to award the third and fourth place trophies in class 1A and we head to the public address announcer Paul Herzog for the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midcourt for the presentation of the third and fourth place team and individual awards for the 2012 1A IHSA state basketball tournament. Presenting medallions will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors attending today's game. They are Dr. Michael Gardner, Frankfort Lincoln Way North, James Boyd, Port Byron Riverdale, 
Ron Connor of Clinton, Division 5. Dr. Chuck Nagel of East Peoria, Division 6. Jim Woodward, Anna Jonesboro, Division 7. And the treasurer, Greg Bradley of Mount Zion. Presenting medallions will be Dr. Gardner and Dr. Nagel. At this time, we will meet the Raiders of Winnetka North Shore Country Day, who finish in fourth place in 1A with a record of 19 and 6. Let's meet the superintendent of Country Day, Tom Dorr. <laughs> Athletic Director, Patrick McHugh. Trainer, Katie Benning. Thanks a lot. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> Head coach, Rashid Smith. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Assistant coach, Matt Stennis. Manager, Ethan Timmons Schiffman. And now the Raider players. Zero, Jamie Swimmer. Two, Cameron Chung. Congratulations, son. Smile. Four, Theodore Airy. Congratulations, son. Great job. Great turn. 21, Timothy Moret. Congratulations, son. Good job. 22, Jake Bruce. Twenty-three, Austin Curran. Twenty-four, Riley Hall. Thirty, Michael Jaharis. Forty-two, Matthew Tui. Forty-four, Ian Meyer. And fifty-four. Floris Hunman, the Raiders of North Shore Country Day. Presenting medallions to the third place team will be Ron Connor, assisted by Jim Boyd. Let's meet the Cougars of Mason City, Illini Central. Third place in 1A, a record of 18 and 13. Let's meet the superintendent of Illini Central, Lori Harrison. Principal, Ed Jedlowski. <laughs> Assistant Principal, Chris Snyder. <laughs> Athletic Trainer, Steve Proctor. Head Coach, John Giesler. Assistant coach, Tony Worley. <laughs> Assistant coach, Scott Francis. <laughs> Assistant coach, Elliot Herman. <laughs> Scorekeeper, Nathan List. <laughs> Manager, Jordan Lynn. Manager, Colin Price. Manager, Matt Plackett. Videographer, Dylan Hull. And now the Cougar players, number four, Seth Kirby. Eleven, Derek Himmel. Thirteen, Connor Martin. 14, Jared Entwistle. <laughs> 20, Jesse Thompson. 21, Ian Albers. 23, Justin Anke. 25, Noah Kirby. 33, Grant Bale. 
35, Jordan Bradshaw. Fifty one, Dylan List. Fifty three, Duncan McClure. And fifty five, Zach Harmon. The Cougars of Mason City Illini Central, third place in one A two thousand and twelve. Presenting the Fourth place trophy will be Greg Bradley, will Coach Smith. And the captains of Country Day, please step forward and receive the fourth place trophy. Congratulations, fellas. Thank you. Hold it up. It's headed the other way. It's heavy. Face your crowd. Hold it. Face your crowd. Hold it. Hold it this way. Congratulations. And now will Coach Giesler and the captains of Illini Central please step forward and receive the third place fourth from Jim Woodward. Congratulations to the Cougars, third place, 2012, 1A. For the folks in Mason City, very proud of their state or their third place trophy. Coming back home, Illini Central winning the first ever trophy in boys basketball for North Shore Country Day. It should be noted that their counterpart in Winnetka, Nutrier, hasn't won any sort of trophy in basketball since 2002. So they'll be the ones holding the trophy this year for fourth place. So congratulations to the Raiders and to the Cougars. And we still have more trophies to hand out, like a state championship, the Class 1A title game with Woodlawn in front, 30 to 27. We'll be back with a second half when we, right here on the IHSA Television Network. IHSA Network Halftime is presented by Realtor.com. Realtor.com's real estate search app makes researching neighborhoods and finding homes for sale easy. Download it for your smartphone in your market or at Realtor.com slash mobile. Three-point lead for Woodlawn here in the state championship game. Shane Witzel, that big three there at the end helps. Momentum into the halftime. Yeah, definitely so. It's a big shot. It's important for us to, to get some looks there because of the way they're guarding us. And uh, Jason Hateman uh, stepped up and hit some big shots right there when they were helping off on Christian Summit, and that was huge. We didn't shoot it well early, uh, but we, we guarded. We kind of kept ourselves there in the game, and 41 hit some big shots for them from the perimeter. And, uh, you know, we need to be a little bit better uh, defensively, but I feel like that we're fighting for rebounds pretty good and we're taking care of the ball. Okay, Coach, good luck in the second half. Head Coach Shane Witzel of Woodlawn. We'll talk to Carrollton Head Coach Jim, Jeff Crudy coming up. Yes. Can you do me a favor? Three-point deficit for Carrollton as we head to the second half. Jeff Kermwitty, what do you do to take control of this one? Well, we've got to hope they don't shoot quite as well from beyond the arc, and they're continuing to do that like they did yesterday. I think they were 6 of 14 or something, and so we've got to try to, some of those that are rattling in and back in again and out, we got to make sure that we get those under control and we rebound better. But uh, I think we played a great first half. I really do. I thought we played real well. They just hit more threes than we did. Okay, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you for your time. Jeff Kroonweedy of Carrollton. Gentlemen. All right, Matt Rodewald, thank you very much. Yeah, six threes for Carrollton only, or uh, check that for Woodlawn, only three for Carrollton. And while uh, Woodlawn was hitting those threes, Carrollton went cold toward the end of the half, one for their last six. Well, Woodlawn started out a little bit cold from three-point range. They hit three of their first ten, then in the final four minutes of the first half, and Holland Camp makes the big three, a momentum lift going in at the halftime. They make three out of their last four. So the three balls definitely the difference here in the uh, in the first half as Woodlawn Woodlawn is holding on to a narrow three-point lead. Yeah, very well played first half, and we've got the second half and a state championship coming your way next from Peoria. Back at Carver Arena, there you get a look at the numbers from the first half. Carrollton actually shooting it better than Woodlawn, but not from three-point range, Greg. Well, that's the difference. The three-point shot's been the difference, and Woodlawn lives out on that perimeter. When they make threes, they're tough to beat, and they make six of them in the first half, six of 14 shooting the three, so they make three more field goals from three-point range than what the uh, Carrollton Hawks did. That's really been the difference here, a three-point lead for Woodlawn. And the Cardinals did not turn the ball over once in the first half. That's... That's good basketball. Against a very aggressive man to man defense. AJ Webb baseline jumper off the mark. And the officials talk it over. It'll stay with Woodlawn. 
Well, it looked like that the ball may have gone off of Hapeman on that play. Woodlawn, third trip to state in the last four years. They've gotten used to being everybody's target. Shane Witzel says every night you're going to get the best effort from everybody that you play. That sharpened us and that's honed us. They are a finely honed, well oiled machine here as they play in the state championship. Second time they played in the title game in the last four years. Well, Woodlawn's in his own defense. They normally play a lot of man to man, but just. Gone to his own defense scores. in this ball game and really couldn't keep Har from taking it off the bounce and getting it on the inside. Jordan Har having a, having a really nice uh, nice ball game now with uh, with eight points. Shouldn't be able to do that against his own, should you? Not that easily. One point game now. Webb thought about the three steps in off the dribble and scores. The All State center fielder has a knack of making big shots, according to his coach. He's made them here this weekend. Yesterday for AJ Webb, seven in this ball game. His team back up three. They're just collapsing that zone defense out, uh, playing a lot down around that paint area, trying to keep the basketball out of the hands of Coonrock. Carrollton handed top ranked Brimfield their only loss of the year in Tuesday's super sectional win. At Jacksonville, Cody Kraut for three. Just 12 of 34 behind the arc all season long. And he hits one here in the state championship to tie the game. Gabe Owens for three. Boy, what a great shooter. Two inches taller than he was a year ago. It's still a great shooter behind the line. Yeah, it's really about the, the cleanest look he's had at, at a three in this game. Hollenkamp skies for the rebound, and he's fouled. Yeah, hard chasing down his shot, but Hollenkamp, a good job boxing out to come away with the rebound. And uh, you heard Coach Shane Witzel say he's very happy with his ball club and the way they rebounded in the first half because. He knew that was a key to this ball game. How well they could get on the glass for the Carrollton Hawks. Second foul on Jordan Har. Harlow tries to drive. It's a lot of contact. It'll be Woodlawn ball. A lot of standing that time by Woodlawn on the offensive end. Didn't get a whole lot done. Camp pops out open in the corner and knocks in another three. No, it was a two. Holland Camp with 13 to lead the way. He leads all scorers with 13. Five point lead for the Cardinals. Coonrod not getting many touches now here in this third quarter. Bucket inside for Har and looked like Harlow got popped in the nose, maybe inadvertently. That gives Har 10 points and it cuts the lead to three as we take a timeout here at our 1A state championship game at Carver Arena. Our Realtor.com trivia question How many total inductees from the IHSA are in the NFHS Hall of Fame? And we asked you that a little bit earlier. 23 IHSA student athletes, coaches, officials, and administrators have been inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame. So, a little national recognition, a little statewide recognition for the folks from Woodlawn. They're kind of used to being here in Peoria. They can almost plan their spring break around a trip to Peoria, can't they? <laughs> well, they brought a lot of fans here to the tournament also. It's nice to see so many people from Southern Illinois following the Woodland Cardinals playing here this afternoon for a state championship to bring it back to Southern Illinois. All four of our semifinalists were in search of their first state title on the way here. We knew we'd crown a first time state champion this weekend in class 1A.
And Carrollton's going to have to match up now. Owens looking to make something happen off the dribble. Holland camp, nice little move. That one won't go. Owens got a hand on it. And it'll be Carrollton ball. You know, Carrollton closed the uh, second quarter, really struggling shooting the ball, one of six, but they've gotten hot here in the third quarter, three of four. There you see Owens, number 22, really going for the rebound, and uh, he slaps it out of bounds. It'll be Carrollton's basketball. And see what Woodlawn's doing on the uh, on the defensive end. Looks like it's a, you know, they're playing, looks like it's a soft man to man. And, and it's kind of disguised almost like it's a zone defense. Watson pulls up. Par the follow. And see, Woodlaw just couldn't keep him off the offensive glass. Glass, Coonrod finally gets a basket here in the uh, third quarter to help us ball club get back to within one. Jordan Har getting loose inside. He's got 12 points for Carrollton. Makes it a one point game. Have won eight straight, 11 straight wins for Carrollton. Holland Camp three for four behind the arc before that miss. Well, Coonrod now with 12 rebounds in the ball game. Hard in the lane. Boy, keep losing track of him. Crop the rebound. Has it taken away. And now a foul from behind on Jordan Har will be his third. the inside that time. Boy. Those guys are really battling. Both these teams very, very physical. Jordan Har, he's very physical. 6'2", about 180, 185. All you have to do is look at him to find out well, he really how gives he his, plays with that black eye. He really gives his ball club a lift when he can throw in 12 points. That's what he's got here on the afternoon. Woodlawn hasn't had a field goal since the 505 mark. Holland can a really tough shot there, forced it a bit. So it's a three-minute dry spell and counting now for Woodlawn. Cling to a one-point lead here. Watson for three. Coonrod the rebound, and he scores. His father, Tim, was on the 84 Carrollton Elite 8 team that won 29 games. He's done dad's team one better with 30 wins, looking for 31 here today. And he's got a brother that's pitching for Southern Illinois University. Sam Coonrod was on this Carrollton squad a year ago. That's the pitcher at SIU. Left for the back cut, but Fraley was there to take it away. Quickly down the floor, trying to get it under control. Was Watson, he's fouled on that, and he'll go to the line. Shot by Watson up from the outside, and guess what? Guess what? Coonrod on the offensive rebound. You get able to get the stick back. Nice dish that time by Fraley. Nice pick up by Watson. Then he's just hammered on the play by Hateman, and Watson will be at the line. Third foul on Hateman. Duba into the lineup for Carrollton. Our first look at him today, Clay Duba, the sophomore. Tyler Watson at the line. He had 22 in the win over Metro East Lutheran. It's his first point of the game. Duba all over Gabe Owens. And a foul will go against Fraley. That's his second. Duba, another uh, another sophomore, and they've got a freshman and they got a sophomore. These guys are going to be pretty good in the future. for Carrollton here as we are under a minute to go in the third quarter. 
Yeah, really getting out and doing a much better job. Carrollton checking the three point shooters. And as I say that, Hateman gets a wide open look. Crowd drives baseline. Looks like he got swatted out from behind, but he still scores. Kraut with his second field goal of the quarter. And the rebounds are really going Carrollton's way. They're, they're a plus 12 on the boards right now. Big difference here in the ballgame. 9-0 run for the Hawks. Almost a steal by Duba. Boy, he really is a aggressive defensive player off the bench. Now a couple other players go down. Watson and Kennedy. Ten seconds. Kick out to Webb for three. No good. The dry spell continues for Woodlawn. Two seconds. One. Watson at the buzzer. Boy. Didn't miss it by a lot. Strong run to the wire here in the third quarter for Carrollton. A 9-0 run. And they take a four-point lead on A.J. Webb and Carrollton. Prout with the outside shot. Entertaining state championship game in Class 1A here at Carver Arena. Matt Rodewald with you. Carrollton with a four-point lead thanks to 14 points behind Joey Coonrod. You know, these two teams are going to celebrate, and so here's your information on that. If you're interested in either one of the schools, 2 o'clock Sunday, both schools, each school is going to have their own celebration in their gym. They're about 120 miles apart, so you won't be able to go to both, Lee. Sorry. Even with the jet? Now with, now with Mr. Peoria's jet, no. <laughs> Carrollton on a right, nice that, run. They closed the third quarter on a 9-0 run. And Woodlawn was only one of five shooting the three in the third quarter. Woodlawn has won the last 5-0-5 without a point. So it's a five-minute plus scoring drop for the Cardinals. And Carrollton has taken advantage to build a four-point lead here as we open the fourth quarter. 1A state championship action coming your way from Carver Arena in downtown Peoria. Lee Hall, Greg Sterick, Matt Rodewald. 2A state championship action coming your way tonight. We'll tip off at 6.30 and then the championship game, Breeze Central and U-High from nearby Normal. Carroll did a nice job turning over their offense. A lot of down screens, a lot of down picks, and they try and take you off the bounce. Watson at the free throw line. He traveled, or was he fouled? He was fouled. Reach in on Woodlawn. Just the second team foul on Woodlawn here in the second half. Yeah, Watson a nice job there, taking it off the bounce, and Kennedy picked up the personal foul. Don't think that's who Watson wanted to pass the ball to, do you? For some reason, I don't think he wanted to throw it to the coach. He was open yesterday, too. <laughs> Seven turnovers now for Carrollton. Only one turnover in the ballgame for Woodlock. And he's wearing home white, too, so it's hard to tell. You know, you see a guy open in white, you throw him the ball. Gabe Owens for three. Kind of a quiet day for Gabe Owens, but that's his second three of the game. He makes it a one-point game. Well, a huge basket that time by Gabe Owens. Coonrod looks inside. Kraut, reverse, doesn't go. What Kennedy, real nice rebound by Matt Kennedy, the six-foot junior there. Let's see if they can run Gabe Owens along that baseline here. Rebound, and he gets whistled for the five second call at the other end. Jordan Hart comes back in for Carrollton. This Carrollton team had a close call against Franklin in the sectional semifinal. They got out down 20 points at halftime. Franklin draining all kinds of threes. Took double overtime for the Hawks to avoid an upset loss there, and they rode it all the way state championship game from that near tragic exit for Carrollton. Webb the foul there. Yeah, he reached behind Coonrod, beat him off to the dribble, then he reached, trying to make up and reach with his hands instead of moving his feet, picked up the personal foul. What? 
seven members of this Hawks basketball team won a state championship game in baseball. Is proud. If he was playing third base as he does on the baseball team, that'd be an E5. It looks like Carrollton's kind of quit attacking, haven't they, on the offensive end? Coonrod with only one basket here. And they really kind of quit attacking, kind of watching that clock, trying to run a lot of clock instead of attacking. I believe it's a little bit early in the fourth quarter to quit attacking. Especially when you only have a one point lead. Woodlawn went through a five minute plus dry spell. Carrollton now suffering through one. Coonrod whistled for the foul as he tried to blow through a pick. Well, Kennedy, Kennedy's a very aggressive player. He goes and sets that pick, and uh, <laughs> Coonrod says it'll be easier to go through it than around it, and picked up a second personal foul. <laughs> All Joey Coonrod did for the football team last fall was play quarterback, running back, linebacker, D line, and safety. So he's not afraid of a little contact. Owen's way off on that three. Well, Coonrod's got 14 points and 14 rebounds in this ball game. Well, and he, you know, he, I just mentioned what he did to the football team. He's kind of like that in basketball, too, Greg. He does so many different things. He can score inside, he can score outside, he rebounds for you, he can bring the ball up. He passes it pretty well, guards well. Pretty complete player. Oh, and he hit 527 and was the winning pitcher in the state baseball title game, too. Oh, it's for three. Now he's feeling. Down the ball game, starting to look for a shot too. That's back-to-back -back three point shots by Gabe Owens. Woodlawn back on top. All three of his threes here in the second half. Pale and the freshman strong to the hoop. And Holland Camp with the board. His eighth rebound of the game. Just about what we expected in our 1A state championship game, Greg. Yeah, the ball club's very, very evenly matched. A perimeter ball club, Woodlawn, and they're making threes, especially here late. Back to back threes by uh, by Gabe Owens to give his ball club a 43 41 lead. We saw that big rebound edge, and the edge in threes goes to Gabe Owens and the Cardinals as well. They lead it by two. Back at Carver Arena, hard-fought third-place game in 1A. Illini Central came out on top. We got another hard-fought game right here. Woodlawn leading Carrollton with 4.23 left in our 1A state championship game. More of America's original March Madness tonight. Seton Academy and Rockford Lutheran tip it off, followed by Breeze Central and Uhi for the state championship in Class 2A. The Pioneers out of normal. Seven lead changes, two ties in this game, Greg. We were just talking about that before the break, about what a hard-fought close game this was. Carrollton's got Duba back in the ball game, strictly because of his defense and his quickness out on the perimeter. Takes it away. Kennedy gets it back, can't control, goes to the floor to get it. Timeout Shane Whistle as Kennedy went to the floor to take it back after Clay Duba took it away from him. Well, a big play that time by Kennedy, really getting after the basketball. Looked like they were going to get an easy. But Duba just slaps it away from Kennedy. He stays with it nicely. Gets down. Kind of a scrum down on the floor a little bit. And Kennedy comes up. And a good quick timeout, too, by head coach Shane Whistle. Saw that he's about to lose the, uh, the basketball. We're down under four minutes here in this ball game. And Here's a look at Gabe Owens. We've seen him here since he was a freshman. Won the three-point shootout. He is uh, on target from three here in the second half, hitting all of his threes after halftime. Well, he's hit back-to-back -back threes, so he's been huge and uh, very excited after he knocked down that three-point shot. Woodlawn's made nine of 22. A good look there at, uh, at Gabe Owens. He, Owens, he continues to get better every year. He's grown about two inches since we saw him here in the state finals a, uh, a year ago. A tremendous shooter from the outside. Assistant coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals is his father, Scott. And his dad graduated from Woodlawn in 86, played ball at Wash U. Gabe, but not only is he a good shooter, it, it, you know, this this game will wear you out. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's tough to, 
<laughs> even as exciting as it is, sometimes it's hard to stay awake for. I know. I've had, <laughs> I've had to wake you up on two or three occasions here this afternoon. <laughs> Don't go to sleep for the final 350, please. It's a two-point ball game. Wouldn't line up. 43-41. Got to have a little fun. Huh? Back of my head sore from being slapped. <laughs> Hickman can't get that one to rattle in. Coonrod's got to find a shot here. He's got to find some way to get a basket, either take it off of the bounce or pull up and hit that jumper. Coonrod can't get the bounce that time. Holland Camp got a hand on it, and Hickman picks it up. The other thing I was going to say about Gabe Owens real quick as he brings it up, he made it to sectionals in golf, so he's, uh, he's a good all-around athlete. But he can hit it about 300 yards with all that long, lanky frame. That's a three. Here comes Fraley. Ahead of the pack and score. How did he do it? Lee? He beat everybody down the floor with his quickness off of the bounce. Big, big basket for Fraley. That's a home run ball. By the way, he had a home run in the state championship game. Four of eight in the tournament home run four RBIs he's looking for another state title here as he ties the game the shot goes up by Gabe Owens and it's a long rebound off the three and but Fraley looks like he's just kind of picking his spots slips between two wood lawn defenders strong to the glass the little guy at five six a big basket to tie the ball game get uh, that uh, aerodynamic hairstyle too that faux hawk not slowing him down any. <laughs> 225 left in this one. Nothing decided yet. 43 all. Hey, time out, time out. Watson tied up. And it's going to be a foul. It'll be a foul call against Woodlawn. Fouls on Owens. Second on him. Not in the bonus situation right there. Watson on the drive, and then Owens reaches in and picks up the foul. There's a real tangle there on that play with uh, A.J. Webb and Joey Coonrod. And the foul's going to go on uh, A.J. Webb. And it's his third. We'll reload, and Carrollton ball again. Guys got to want to pull the trigger now at the two minute mark of the ball game time. What a oh. spin move by Har. <laughs> Thought it would stay up there forever. And we got a foul on the floor. And it's another foul against Woodlawn. This one against Owens will be his third. Watch the Jordan Har just attack rim on that play. It gets it up on the window and hangs around. Hangs around. You think, is this thing going to fall in? <laughs> no, it's going to fall off. And then who else but Coonrod cleans it up. And then on the baseline, Coonrod gets a basket. Coonrod with 16. Carrollton back out in front by a bucket. Timeout for Shane Witzel. He wants to talk it over. Forty-five, forty-three. Carrollton in the lead. Woodlawn down now to its last timeout. Three timeouts left for Carrollton. Well, when Carrollton needs baskets, somehow Joey Coonrod always finds a way, doesn't he, Lee, to find a basket? In yesterday's ball game, he made big free throws and baskets right at the end of the ball game, and he just made a huge basket for his ball club to give him a two-point lead. They're going to be gambling. We've got the lead in the ball. They're going to be gambling, so make sure you're in the eye. Nothing decided yet. Nerves frayed in the stands. And you can look at Shane Witzel. He's been part of every post-game success in Woodlawn history. Two regional championships as a player, five regionals, four sectionals, three supers, and now a third trophy here at State as the head coach of the Cardinals. 
Third place uh, finish last year. They uh, beat beat Deerback, right? The third place game beat a year ago. In the third place game a year ago. Lost to Macon Meridian in the championship game in 2009. They trail it here by two. Christian Hollenkamp just two points second half. Minute 31 left. Will regulation be enough to decide this or will we need overtime? Carlton still out in that aggressive man to man defense. Hard chasing Owens all over the floor. Owens gets an open look. Can't convert it. Here comes Carrollton with the ball and a two point lead. Good job by Coonrod to close out on the three point shooter, Gabe Owens. Carrollton won't be in too big a hurry here, you wouldn't think. Under a minute to go now. Hard drives. He's fouled on the way to the hoop. And gets hit in his right eye, the eye that uh, he got conked in uh, Tuesday. Black eye there. Jordan Hard so good taking the ball off the bounce. A spin move there. He gets it in his left hand. Looking to dish on that play. Wanted to get the ball inside to uh, Palin. But it'll be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Jordan Haar at the charity stripe. Haar is a 33 percent, or check that, 63 percent free thrower. That's his first attempt of the day. Big miss right there. Woodlawn down two. Hollicamp, tough shot. Paling got the rebound and he's fouled. Still, uh, still all going to be to nail this thing down. Somebody's going to make some free throws. Watch Holland Camp. Did he get a bump right there? May have gotten a bump from Coonrod when he went up to shoot the ball. No call on the play. And the freshman Palin able to slip in and, and clean up a, uh, a rebound and in the rebound game. Right now, Carrollton's a plus 16 on the boards. Plus 16. Halen, just a freshman. He grew up playing with older kids. His older brother, a member of this team last year, Ryan Palin. So this is nothing new for him, but he can't convert the free throw. Woodlawn wants a better shot than the last one they got. Holland can't force that one. Down two. Webb for three in the lead. A.J. Webb makes it a one-point Woodlawn lead. Carrollton's got timeouts if they want him. Coonrod for the lead. Bounces out, Webb the rebound. And he's fouled, and it'll be free throws for A.J. Webb. What a huge basket by A.J. Webb. Just another three. A.J. Webb, the smooth lefty from out on the perimeter. Owens with the pass. There's A.J. Webb, the high archer. Nothing but net to give his ball club a one-point lead. A great shot by A.J. Webb. Gabe Owens with the pass. There's Webb. Net could be the game winner. Shane Witzel told us earlier this week, A.J. Webb has a knack of making big shots. Boy, was he prophetic with that statement. A.J. Webb now in double figures with 10 points. His second three of the day gives Woodlawn a one-point lead. With three seconds left, it won't be free throws for Woodlawn. They will inbounds 94 feet from their basket. Yeah, Here's good, another look. Yeah, good find that time by Gabe Owens, and he's able to find A.J. Webb out on the perimeter. And Webb's thinking about it. And you know that old saying, you can never make a big shot if you're afraid to take a big shot. And A.J. Webb pulls the trigger and gets the shot to go to give his ball club a one-point lead. Well, and Shane Witzel talked about big games and big game pressure earlier this week. He said, you know, you want them to experience the hype and have the fun leading up to the game, but once the game starts, you've got to keep your composure. And A.J. Webb, calm, cool, and collected behind the line there. Nothing but net. I mean, he just knocked it down. He's really worked on his shooting from a year ago. He's a guy that averages 11 points for a ball game. Was tremendous in their win yesterday with 21 points. And what a shot by A.J. Webb. If the Carrollton Hawks 
aren't able to uh, get anything done on this last uh, last possession, the uh, they're going to point to that free throw line and the last two free throws that they missed. And the ball is going to belong to Woodlawn, so it's going to have to be a, hopefully a steal or a quick foul. Carrollton able to make something happen in the final minute yesterday as they trailed. Can they do it again? to Holland Camp. He's fouled immediately and he'll shoot free throws at the other end. Oh, nice well executed inbounds play by Woodlawn. They get the ball in. They get the ball into uh, to Holland Camp and, uh, it, and it will be a free throw shooting opportunity. Jeff Frumweed will call timeout. Let me try and uh, Freeze Christian Holland camp a little bit here. That's the thinking anyway. Carrollton's got two timeouts left. He can't, can't save them or take them to overtime if there is an overtime. So no, we talked about the three-point shot and Woodlawn being a perimeter ball club. And in the third quarter, they were having trouble shooting a three. They were only one of five. So they were six of 14 at the intermission, and all of a sudden now Woodlawn 10 of 25 shooting a three. So 30 points have come from behind the line. And you, so they make 10 threes and uh, Carrollton with only what four threes in the ball game. So a huge difference right there in the ball ball game. And Woodlawn is knocking on the door for a state championship. 2.1 seconds left. It's Holland Camp at the line. Coming up tonight, Rockford Lutheran Seton Academy tips off our 2A tournament coverage tonight here on the IHSA TV network. And then it's the U High Pioneers playing for the state title. And taking on Breeze Central. Yeah, I think Holland Camp will be at the line. I don't think Woodlawn's going to put anybody up on the line. They'll back everybody off. And Holland Camp uh, with an opportunity at the line. Woodlawn definitely doesn't want to get any, do anything silly like foul on a free throw opportunity. So Shane Witzel's got everybody all back off the line. Holland Camp knocks down the free throw. 70% free thrower. Woodlawn starting to celebrate just a little bit, but there's still two and one ten seconds left. And he makes them both. They can do no worse than overtime. Crumweedy calls timeout. So it's a three point lead now. Holland Camp with 15 points. I say they can do no worse than overtime, but. I guess if you threw in a three at the buzzer and got fouled, you could <laughs> win on a four point play. I've never seen that. I've seen four point plays, though. I've seen not many the, four point plays, oh, yeah, but not at the buzzer. Not at the buzzer. Not at the buzzer. I've seen four point plays, but when you look back late in this ball game, gosh, how huge were the shots by Gabe Owens? The two threes that he made back to back, it, it was a, a four point lead for Carrollton at 41 to 37, and that's when Owens buried his first three to get him back to one and then he hits another three for his 11th point on the afternoon to give his ball club a 43 41 lead with 423 to go and then it was, it was kind of seesaw didn't it late in the ball game four different players have hit three pointers for Woodlock game let's go to Matt Rodewall you know the timeout before this lead he's uh, Jeff Krumweed he said if you've ever dreamed of winning or sending a game into overtime on a half court shot here's your chance they're not going to call a timeout, though, when they get it at half court. Looks like this is going to be the play. Christian Hollenkamp, 6'5", will guard the inbounds play. Here's the heave. Har got a hand on it. They call it jump ball. The possession arrow points to Woodlawn. Does it not? Uh, it's a home run pass, and the baseball player Coonrod uh, threw that long pass, and then everybody went up to try and grab the basketball. And it was, Woodlawn was able to tie him up, and the possession arrow belongs to Woodlawn. One and one seconds to go. They inbounds. Hickman hangs on, and so does Woodlawn. The Cardinals finish on a 5-0 run. 
one to win their first state championship. And Carrollton can only look on. Well, it was everything we expected, and then some. Oh, it was a great ball game. Wouldn't lie to both Carrollton. Both these teams are very, very solid, very well coached basketball teams. And Woodlawn just made three point shots. That was the difference late in the ball game. And, and Carrollton had opportunities. Har and Palin both had opportunities at the free throw line. Hateman hung on long enough, and the Cardinals celebrate their first state championship second in 09 and Shane Witzel talked about his 2010 team and how they after they made it to state and finished second they pressed you know they pressed themselves there was a lot of pressure internally among the players they lost a couple of games then he thought that helped them. they didn't make it back to state but he thought that helped his team last year they get here they lose their semifinal game and win the third place trophy and now here they are back to win a state championship. Well, very deserving of a state championship. The community deserves it. It's a tremendous program. A lot of tradition at Woodlawn about their basketball and their sports programs. Shane Witzel has been a very, very big part of it. He's been a player there. He's in their Hall of Fame, just like his assistant coach. And uh, last year when they made the trip to Shan or excuse me, Peoria, just did not play well in the first ball game. They responded to win third place. And then the dream of winning a state championship, it's happened right here at Carver Arena. The Woodlawn Cardinals state champions. Very emotional Gabe Owens. We've, <laughs> we've known him since he was a freshman. And... He showed a lot of guts as a freshman winning the three point championship and uh, boy a lot of uh, intestinal fortitude out there today A.J. Webb the game winner and Woodlawn celebrates a state championship. Let's go to Paul Herzog 2012 the class 1A basketball tournament presenting medallions and members of the Illinois High School Board of Directors attending today's game they are. Dr. Michael Gardner from Frankfort Lincoln Way, Lincoln Way North, representing Division Three. James Boyd, Port Byron Riverdale, Division Four. Ron Connor, Clinton, Division Five. Dr. Chuck Nagel, East Peoria, Division Six. Jim Woodward, Anna Jonesboro, Division Seven. And Greg Bradley, Mount Zion, the Treasurer. Presenting medallions will be Greg Bradley, assisted by Dr. Michael Gardner. Meet the Hawks of Carrollton in second place, 1A, a record of 30 and 5. Let's meet the superintendent of Carrollton, Dr. Elizabeth Pressler. Principal, Dr. Craig Garber. Athletic director, Greg Holman. Great job. Thank you. Trainer, Chris Swiderski. Head coach, Jeff Crumweedy. Assistant coach, Brian Diskin. Assistant coach, Blaine Hartwick. Manager, Matthew Pond. Scorekeeper, Colette Shade. And now the Hawks, number five, Jacob Smith. Number 10, Tanner Crumweedy. Number 14, Ethan Fry. 15, Jordan Har. 23, Luke Halen. 24, Mike Fraley. 
25, Tyler Watson. 30, Cody Leonard. 32, Clay Duba. 33, Matthew Henson. 41, Joey Coonrod. And 43, Cody Kraut. The Carrollton Hawks, second place, a record of 30 and five. Presenting the medallions. Never mind. Never mind. Sorry. Be Jim Woodward, assisted by Ron Connor. Let's meet the Cardinals of Woodlawn. First place, a record of 29 and 5. The superintendent, Alan Estes. Principal, David Larkin. Athletic director and head coach, Shane Witzel. That's right, that's right. Scorekeeper, Wayne Braddock. Assistant coach, Scott Owens. Manager, Vincent Malley. Manager, Randy Garber. Now the Cardinals, number 10, Ryan Richardson. Eleven, Matt Kennedy. Number 12, Logan Wallerman. 14, Ty Coleman. 15, A.J. Webb. 21, Brendan Peterson. 22, Gabe Owens. 24, Chase Phelps. 25, Logan Isaac. 30, Christian Hollenkamp. 31, Jason Hateman. 33, Chris Harlow. 35, Jake Robinson. And 40, Bryson Sanders. Presenting the trophy for fourth place will be James Boyd. At this time, will Coach Crum Reedy and the captains of Carrollton step forward and receive the second place trophy. 2012, a record of 30 and 5. Congratulations. Making the presentation of the championship trophy will be Dr. Chuck Nagel. Will the Coach Witzel and captains of Woodlawn step forward and receive the first place trophy, 2012. Great job. 1A. Congratulations to the Cardinals, a record of 29 and 5. So three returning starters for Woodlawn and the 10th ranked Cardinals pick up their 29th win in their first ever state championship. All right, let's uh, join Matt Rodewald. He caught up with Shane Witzel just moments ago. Shane Witzel finally gets a state championship. He's been there a couple of times, but on the doorstep before you get the title now. Yeah, I just want to give all the praise and glory to God. And, and this is a great group of guys, and I've been extraordinarily blessed. And A.J. Webb's shot there at the end was huge. Great execution at the end to, uh, to prevent them from giving them a chance to tie the game. And just got a great, great group of guys that are that are team chemistry and they're concerned about each other. They're great teammates and just an extraordinarily win. Walk me through that final play in the last 30 seconds, down by two, and A.J. goes for the three. 
Uh, you mean the one he made? Yeah, the one he hit. Yeah, we, we tried to run a quick hitter to get an open, get open look, and it got a busted play because they guarded it pretty well. Uh, AJ's not afraid to take big shots, and obviously uh, that was a huge one that he made there to uh, give us the lead and uh, the state championship. Well, Coach, congratulations. You've been here before, almost got it. You won on Saturday. This win is a little bit sweeter than that. Definitely so. All right, congratulations. Shane Witzel, his first state championship for Woodlawn. They take home their first first place trophy. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Well, Greg Sterick, you talked in the pregame about three-point shooting. Woodlawn got it, and none bigger than that one with 17 seconds left by A.J. Webb. Well, A.J. Webb hit a big shot, and I've always said <laughs> you got to want to take a big shot to make a big shot. A.J. Webb stepped up and just buried the three-point shot and really helped the Cardinals go on to win a, a state championship. But let's don't lose sight of the fact the way that Joey Coonrod played in the ballgame also. He, he was tremendous for Carrollton in the ballgame. He, he was able to get 16 points in the ball game had 17 rebounds in the ball game so Woodlawn the state champion Carrollton uh, finishes second and the third fourth place game was a good ball game also as uh, Illini Central was the winner in that ball game over North Shore this was a good tournament this year tremendous tournament and I think we have a, a tremendous champion in the Woodlawn Cardinals. Our congratulations to Jeff Crumweedy and the Carrollton Hawks. 30 win season for them and a second place trophy. And there you get a look at the Woodlawn Cardinals. Their third trophy in the last four seasons. A second, a third, and this one, the state championship for Shane Witzel and the Woodlawn Cardinals. Hope you've enjoyed it here from Peoria. For Greg Sterick, Matt Rodewald, and our fantastic crew here in Peoria, I'm Lee Hall. Stick around for state championship action tipping off tonight at 6.30. And we're back with you here next week from Peoria in Carver Arena. So long.